You're stunning. What's one of your beauty secrets? Um, happiness. You have to be happy. And, and when you see a woman or a man that is com confident and comfortable with themselves and happy, it makes you feel happy. One of the most recognizable figures in contemporary music, Beyonce rose to fame as the central member of pop R&B group Destiny's Child before embarking on a multi-platinum record-breaking solo career in 2001. Thank God I love what I do, and, and I have time in between. But, you know, I'm so excited, and this is what I, I was born to do. So it's my life, you know? And I couldn't imagine not being on tour doing records, so I have the time of my life on the stage. As a singer, songwriter, actress, humanitarian, businesswoman, fashion icon, everything, and each one of these things, she's so gigantic. Booming record sales, Grammy Awards, movie roles, and marriage to rapper and CEO Jay-Z combined to heighten her profile in the 2000s. Beyonce does have just an amazing voice. She's got so much range. She covers three octaves. And I have to say that having seen her live on numerous occasions, I think Beyonce is also the best live performer in the world right now. I'm a singer and I, I do dance, but I, I love to sing way more than dance. <laughs> Billboard named her Female Artist of the Decade, while the RIAA acknowledged that through 64 gold and platinum certifications, she was the decade's top-selling artist. Once she released her fifth solo album in 2013, it was evident that the singer, songwriter, and dancer wasn't merely an entertainer, but a progressive artist as well. She's someone that is setting trends. She's not someone that's following trends. And I think in the entertainment business and being able to stand out in the music industry, that says a lot. She's music royalty. What she's achieved as a black female singer is on par with Michael Jackson's sales and all the rest. You get the feeling that this girl can definitely handle fame. I just love talent and entertainment, and I want to be a real entertainer, and I want to eventually win an Oscar, more Grammys, and um, I want to do Broadway, I want to win a Tony Award, I want to be the first black woman to have all three, which is great. <laughs> Get lost in the ultimate story of modern-day superstardom as we take you through the incredible journey of Beyoncé. I think from the moment Beyoncé was born, she was destined to be a star. In the modern era of music, no pop star is as poised, as polished, or as generally fierce as Beyonce Giselle Knowles. A self-described modern-day feminist, Beyonce creates songs that are often characterized by themes of love, relationships, and monogamy, as well as female sexuality and empowerment. On stage, her dynamic, highly choreographed performances have led to critics hailing her as one of the best entertainers in contemporary pop music. Throughout a career spanning over 18 years, she has sold over 118 million albums as a solo artist and a further 60 million with Destiny's Child, making her one of the best-selling music artists of all time. She has won 20 Grammy Awards and is the most nominated woman in the awards history. Forbes magazine also listed her as the most powerful female musician of 2015, and her fan base continues to grow in its hundreds of millions. It's very touching, it's very humbling, and it kind of puts my whole life into perspective because I realize why I really do this and I realize how I touch people when I'm not even conscious of it. So I'm, I'm, I love meeting the fans. As a singer, 
Entertainment Weekly describes Beyonce as a storm system disguised as a singer. She has a 3.6 octave range. And when I went with her to South Africa with Bono and um, Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics, we did a big show for Nelson Mandela called 4664 Concert for his charity. And Dave Stewart had produced some tracks with her. And Dave Stewart, who produced the Eurythmics, Mick Jagger, people like Stevie Nicks, and a lot of great artists, including Annie Lennox and Aretha Franklin, some of the greatest voices ever. Dave said the greatest female voice he's ever worked with was Beyonce. Because he said when she's warming up, she's doing some kind of Arabic and some kind of pentatonic scales, stuff that he's never heard before. And it's just this absolutely brilliant voice. So just as a singer, she could have just been a singer and nothing else, and still been very important. Then he talk about Beyonce, the songwriter, writing nine number one songs. Only three women in history have ever done that. So as a songwriter, she could just make it as a songwriter and forget about singing. Performing, I mean, there's no greater performer in the world right now. Elia Reid, the great songwriter and producer, said that she's the greatest entertainer on earth right now. Coming from him, you know, very, very powerful words. Whatever Beyonce sets her mind to, whether it's acting, singing, dancing, or business ventures, she succeeds in a big way. I think a lot of people with heart can see that I have heart, and um, I encourage other people to have that same strength and fight. And um, I definitely get tired, I definitely mess up, I definitely fall downstairs, I forget the words sometimes, but that's just life. I guess the question is, what are you gonna do after that? And I always get back up, and it just makes me even stronger. To truly gauge the magnitude of her incredible success, we have to go back where it all started. Beyonce Giselle Knowles was born in Houston, Texas on September 4, 1981. To Tina Ann Knowles, a hairdresser and salon owner, and Matthew Knowles, a Xerox sales manager. Beyonce attended St. Mary's Elementary School in Fredericksburg, Texas, where she enrolled in dance classes. Her singing talent was discovered by her dance instructor, Darlette Johnson. So as a child, Beyonce was getting dancing and singing lessons, and during a dance lesson, the dance teacher started to hum a song, and then all of a sudden, Beyonce just started singing the song in perfect pitch and finished the song in perfect pitch, and then all of a sudden, the dance teacher knew that he had a prodigy on his hand. It was clear that from an early age, Beyonce's parents were convinced she would be a star. When I look at Beyonce's life, you could say it's that typical Hollywood kid born into uh, uh, parents who fiercely want their children to be pop stars or superstars. I mean, the whole thing was set up where she would have ballet classes, dance classes. I mean, this girl was working really hard um, from the, you know, probably from the age of seven. Her dad, Matthew, was always on the fringes of showbiz, really. He was a relatively unsuccessful record manager. Her mum was a designer. So they were people who were always very passionate about celebrity and the fame game, and I think always wanted that for their daughters from a very, very young age. Beyonce's interest in music and performing continued after winning a school talent show at age seven, singing John Lennon's Imagine. In the fall of 1990, Beyonce enrolled in Parker Elementary School, a music magnet school in Houston, where she would perform with the school's choir. She also attended the high school for the performing arts and visual arts. At age eight, Beyonce met Kelly Rowland, who had left her home with her mother due to domestic abuse. Kelly Rowland and her mother left her father um, because they were um, victims of domestic abuse. So they moved to Houston, Texas, and that's where they met Beyonce and her family. Kelly, of course, was also singing, so they were interacting a lot in school and in church. And it got to a point that it was just too hard for Kelly's mother to raise her daughter 
and she actually gave legal guardianship to Matthew and Tina Knowles, and they raised Kelly as their own. I do think family is really, really important. I grew up with both of my parents and with my sister and my cousin and with Kelly and all the girls, and it was always a lot of love in my house. So I want the same thing. Beyonce and Kelly met Latavia Robertson while in an audition for an all-girl entertainment group. They were placed into a group with three other girls as Girls' Time and rapped and danced on the talent show circuit in Houston. Girls' Time managed to get themselves noticed and were selected for Star Search, the largest talent show on national TV at the time. Welcome Beyonce, Lativia, Nina, Nikki, Kelly, and Ashley, the hip-hop rappin' Girls' Time. Girls' Time failed to win, and Beyonce later said the song they performed was not good. In 1995, Beyonce's father resigned from his job to manage the group. The move reduced Beyonce's family income by half, and her parents were forced to move into separate apartments. So he was just kind of dedicating his life to them, kind of like what Joe Jackson did with the Jackson Five, their father, and just built them, built them, worked with them every day, you know, trying to build them into, because he realized he had a superstars on the hand, but, it just wasn't um, financially lucrative at the time. You don't give up every single thing uh, in terms of your own work for your kid unless you believe they have a superior talent to everyone else. He mapped out exactly what the plan was for her career and where he wanted her to go. And I think that, you know, he did an incredible job. Matthew cut the original lineup to four, and the group continued performing as an opening act for other established R&B girl groups. The girls auditioned before record labels and were finally signed to Elektra Records, moving to Atlanta Records briefly to work on their first recording, only to be cut by the company. That is the most terrifying experience. It's, it's a horrible experience uh, for, for a person because you go into this um, company and you're very supported by everyone around you only then to be taken out of there so you have to understand how that can feel emotionally because this is your whole life and obviously for Beyonce at that time that was catastrophic and it was also quite catastrophic for the family there'd already been so much pressure because of how much Matthew had been putting into this band and actually the marriage really suffered between Beyonce's mum and dad the incident put further strain on the family and Beyonce's parents separated. After putting the setback behind them, the Knowles family and girls' time continued to pursue their dreams. In 1996, the girls began recording their debut album under an agreement with Sony Music. The Knowles family reunited and shortly after, the group got a contract with Columbia Records. By signing this, now they had a proper record deal, there was proper funding and everything. So even though college was a big break, it was also the big uniting because it was able to bring the Noah's family back together again and the mom and the dad got back together and all of them were back together again because now the financial situation was one where they could be making records and, and, and touring and, and living properly. The group changed their name to Destiny's Child based upon a passage in the book of Isaiah. In 1997, Destiny's Child released their major label debut song, Killing Time, on the soundtrack to the 1997 film, Men in Black. The following year, the group released their self-titled debut album, scoring their first major hit, No, No, No. I think the interesting thing about No, No, No is the fact that you don't really see the Destiny's Child style. It hasn't emerged yet. Um, they're in a club, they get introduced, and they say, hey, check out this new group, and they come up on stage and they perform the song. But they don't really have that, that signature style that they had yet when it came to their wardrobe or their hair. You even see Kelly Rowland with a tiny little pixie cut. She doesn't even look like the Kelly Rowland we know now. And Beyonce, is she's baby Beyonce at that point. So it's really interesting to see everyone, and they're trying to figure out what their sound is like, what their look is like, but they're on their way. Really 
No, 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 shows a lot of sophistication. It's a very sultry kind of sexy video, the way they're dressed and the whole vibe within the video. They were showing that, hey, we're not little girls anymore. We're now adults. And the song was very strong and it had, you know, unusual production and stuff in it and just really set them up as this is a force to be reckoned with. The album established the group as a viable act in the industry with moderate sales and winning the group three Soul Train Lady of Soul Awards. First time I heard Destiny's Child, I'll never forget it, it was at the Mobos. We were just blown away, everyone was blown away by these little things like jumping up and down the stage and dancing really quick and you couldn't stop singing the songs and they were just really sweet and they were just so happy to be there. And that was the first uh, time I saw Destiny's Child. I mean, it was very quick, we met them backstage because I was presenting an award at the Mobos and I, you know, was introduced to them backstage and I just thought, oh, they're really cute little kids, aren't they? So sweet. <laughs> the group released their multi-platinum second album, The Writings on the Wall, in 1999. The record features some of the group's widely known songs, such as Bills, 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 the group's first number one single, Places I ain't never been, but now you're getting comfortable. Ain't doing those things you did no more. Slowly making me pay for things. your money should be handling. And then you ask to use my car. Drop it all day and don't fill up the day. And you have the audacity to even come and step to me. Have to hold some money for me until you get your check next week. You try to good for nothing type of brother. Silly me, why haven't I found another a baller? When time can hard, need someone to help me out instead of a scrub like you who don't know what it means about. The last album, we were just starting out and we were trying to find what we were going to go for, what our style was and who we were going to work with. But this album, we were sure of who we were going to work with. We had a list, our manager came in, he was like, okay, so what are we going to do this album? <laughs> and we listed off the all the producers we wanted and it was a blessing that we got all of them and the difference also is that we got to write on this album we only wrote three songs on the last album and this album we wrote 11 so that's a big change and we were involved more with this album yeah and the album is more conceptual this time beyonce produced a majority of the vocals on the album and if you notice when you listen to the album that the vocals are more in your face this time and mm -hmm. it's tight and it's all because beyonce hooked it up yeah made it run a lot smoother too I don't think you do so what so We're not talking to all guys. We're only talking to the one guy yes. that is being trifling and is running up her phone bill and all of that. So if the guy wasn't doing that, we would never ask God to pay our bills. We believe in 50-50 relationships. Right. But we also know that guys can relate to yes. this situation, too, yes. because we know there are some girls out there that take guys' cars and, <laughs> and drive them and feel like they can spend Gold their credit diggers. cards and all that. So guys, y'all relate to the song. Just, just. Put it in your mind and just put it Feel in your perspective. Don't jump to right. a conclusion by yeah. the chorus just because it says, can you pay my bills? You got to listen to the verses. Exactly. Right. right. Just know that we're writing the song from a female's perspective because we are females. And right. We don't know how to write from a man's perspective, so we had to write it from ours. Boy, don't you want me? I can see it in your eyes. But you keep on praying. Won't you say what's on your mind? Because every time you're giving signs, I want to ask you, what do you hold on? It's 
just all a blessing to see a lot of people just really feeling your songs and singing the words to your songs. I mean, it just gets you more excited and it makes you want to work even harder. Right, but there are more sacrifices that also come with it that we had no idea about. <laughs> we didn't know that we were going to be around, away from our family so much and, you know what I'm saying, get to miss out on the homecoming and the proms, the teenage stuff, you know, that happened during your teenage years, of course. But it's all worth it, like Kelly said. The good always the bad, definitely. Yeah. Follow-up singles, Jumpin' Jumpin' and Say My Name were also smash hits. Say My Name became their most successful song at the time and would remain one of their signature songs. We will never forget songs if we're part of that era like I was. Bills, 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 Say My Name. These became modern anthems. And it was the first time, actually, that everyone got started getting really excited about Destiny's Child because they weren't one-hit wonders, they weren't two-hit wonders. In fact, it was hit after hit after hit. Say My Name won Best R&B Performance and Best R&B Song at the 2001 Grammy Awards. The writings on the wall went on to sell more than 8 million copies worldwide. Despite the band finally gaining the recognition they had been craving, internal problems threatened the future of the band. LaToya Luckett and Latavia Robertson became unhappy with the way Matthew Knowles was managing the band, and they were eventually replaced by Farrah Franklin and Michelle Williams. Beyonce experienced depression following the split with Luckett and Robertson after being publicly blamed by the media and critics. Everyone on the internet, fans, blogs, everyone was blaming her for the exit of the two girls. They said she wanted to be the star. It's that classic Diana Ross thing, like who's going to be the star in the group? And it was Beyonce, and they felt like Matthew looked out for her interests and not the rest of the group. Her long-standing boyfriend also left her at this time. Beyonce's depression was so severe, it lasted for almost two years, during which she occasionally kept herself in her bedroom for days and refused to eat anything. It took her mom to really kind of coerce her out of it and bring her back because she just felt betrayed that these were her best friends, you know, and they were singing together and they came up together and then all of a sudden they would just leave her stranded, you know, in the middle of the thing. So I think it really hurt her, but afterwards I think she realized that you know, it was just ego, it was just jealousy why they left. After more internal problems with the band, Farrah Franklin was dismissed, leaving just Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, and Michelle Williams. The band put the turmoil behind them and got back in the studio. They recorded the track Independent Woman, which appeared on the soundtrack to the 2000 film Charlie's Angels. It became their best charting single, topping the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 charts for 11 consecutive weeks. I think we've had an almost perfect year in 2000. I mean, right now we have number one single, Independent Women, for six weeks. We broke so many records. We had uh, Say My Name, it went number one. Bills, Bills, Bills went number one. Everything we jump, jump in went number one. Everything we put out went number one. Yesterday we performed with Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston. If I died today, I would be perfectly satisfied <laughs> because my life here on Earth has just been so incredible to yes. share with my sisters, two beautiful young ladies, and to be surrounded with so many wonderful fans and be on the same stage with Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston. What more can you ask for? Destiny's Child released their third studio album, Survivor, in May 2001. The album debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200, with first week sales of 663,000 copies sold. The album spawned number one hits, Bootylicious, and the title track, Survivor, the latter of which earned the group a Grammy Award for Best R&B Performance. Yes, I did. I wrote Survivor along with about 10 other songs on the album. And it's really great that I got a chance to write on this album. I also wrote Independent Woman and Jumpin' Jumpin', so it's great. <laughs> Survivor is, um, is a song for everyone. If you've survived 
breast cancer, you know, AIDS or anything, losing your job, divorce, whatever. It's a song to let you know that you can make it. Only if you work harder, you can take it. I mean, it's just a wonderful song. And when everyone hears it, it's a song to where you just feel so strong. You know, I don't even, it won't even, it's like before the song even ends, you're crunk, meaning you're strong. <laughs> but I mean, it was a wonderful song. We were all in the studio in tears and crying and just, it's one of those kind of songs. And it's a wonderful song that Beyonce did. It's Thank wonderful. You. The Survivor album was another amazing accomplishment. It just lifted Destiny's Child into another stratosphere with, I mean, amazing songs on it, like the actual Survivor song. And the video for that song was like, one of the best videos of all time at that time when it came out. It's them on, in Fiji, on an island, deserted island, and just the whole vibe that they created with them kind of washing up on shore, and they had all these kind of rags, wearing these rags. So it was, you know, they kind of looked very, you know, kind of lost, and then they're in the jungle. So then, and from that, then they find this temple and they're dancing in front of the temple. But it had this kind of a exotic sexuality to it. But this is where we really see that signature style come into play. Tina Knowles was a, a group's official stylist. They were using a lot of the clothing that they had created, Beyonce and her mother, from House of Darion. So a lot of their fashions were d on display in the video. And the ladies were sexy and sultry. They're crawling along the beach in the sand and through the water. So it's really sultry. You definitely see that their sound is defined. You see that their look is defined. They know who they are and they're feeling really good about Destiny's Child at that point. After releasing the holiday album, Eight Days of Christmas, Destiny's Child announced a hiatus to further pursue their solo careers. In July 2002, Beyonce focused on her acting, landing a role as Foxy Cleopatra alongside Mike Myers in the film Austin Powers in Goldmember. The movie spent its first week atop the U.S. box office and grossed $73 million. I think Beyonce is the ultimate Bond girl. She should have been in a Bond movie, but I don't know why they didn't ask her. So of course they asked her in Austin Powers, which was Bond spoof, which was Gold Member. She did an amazing job, and she basically got to cut her comedy chops, you know. And she's really funny in it, and and has that kind of a you know, wink in her eye. Beyonce's first solo recording was a feature on Jay Z's 03 Bonnie and Clyde that was released in October 2002, peaking at number four on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart. It was around this time that Beyonce started dating the rap superstar. Jay-Z met Beyonce back in 1997 when she was just starting out with Destiny's Child. He heard her, they were working um, in the same area, and he heard her wailing a Wyclef Jean song, and he was like, this girl is good. And then she started rapping, and he was even more impressed. So for them, it was a professional relationship, and then it built upon a friendship before they ever got involved romantically. They, they walk in and you just get uh, a feeling with the two of them that they are like what you would call Kate and William of the music business. These guys are the royal couple for the music industry. There is absolute respect when they walk in the room. I mean, you've got to see it. It's great to watch. It's actually cool. Beyonce's first solo album, Dangerously in Love, was released on June 24th, 2003. The album sold 317,000 copies in its first week and has since gone on to sell 11 million copies worldwide. It's really crazy because something happens to me when I get on the stage. I'm really calm and shy and just, you know, kind of, I just observe and I'm completely opposite of how I am on the stage. Um, when I get on the stage, I have no idea what's in my head. It's just performing and I don't even remember what goes through my head because I turn into this crazy wild woman. <laughs> the album's lead single, Crazy in Love, featuring Jay-Z, became Beyonce's first number one single as a solo artist. I first heard it on the radio. I remember hearing it on the radio and going, you just, it's just like, I can't, this is just so, you know, like a James Brown song. When you hear a James Brown song and you just can't, it's so good, you can't, your, your face is contorted and the beat is so good, you, you can't keep still, it's like, oh. 
trying to do the dishes and it's, it was all going off, you know. And then when I saw the video, that was it. The video is the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. It was the way that she walked on the road there. It was a dirty road with a broken down car, but the way she did that walk. Yeah, the Dangerous In Love video was just her showing her, her independence, her power, and also her sexuality. And, and, and showcasing her voice and her, and her dance moves and everything. It really captured the magic of Beyonce saying, here I am, I'm gonna take over the world. I'm a superstar. Oh, 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 oh. Dangerous in Love is one of the biggest albums for a solo newcomer of all times and it spawned so many major hit singles. And Beyonce is particularly proud of this album because she actually had a huge falling out with her record company at the time behind the scenes. No one knew anything about it then but she's since spoken about it on the stage during a performance. And basically she played her record company all of the songs from the album and they said that they didn't think there was a hit, a number one hit single in that album and she actually went on to have over five number ones from that album so she managed to prove them all wrong and and that's when I really realized the toughness of Beyonce because she stuck to her gun she knew she had hits on that album I feel like God has given me the gifts every gift that I have every blessing that I have and I feel like he puts certain people in my life for a reason, certain angels, certain people protecting me, things that happen to, to everyone. There's no way you cannot believe that someone isn't looking out for you. And he takes people out of my life that shouldn't be there. And I just feel protected all the time. The single Baby Boy also reached number one, and singles Me, Myself and I and Naughty Girl both reached the top five in the U.S. The album earned Beyonce a then record tying five awards at the 2004 Grammy Awards. I just love talent and entertainment and I want to be a real entertainer and I want to eventually win an Oscar and more Grammys and um, I want to do Broadway, I want to win a Tony Award, I want to be the first black woman to have all three, which is great. <laughs> but I know I'm only 22 so I have 20 years to go to accomplish that. <laughs> In November 2003, she embarked on the Dangerously In Love tour. I have a tour coming up. It's my very first tour. I'm so excited about it because I have so many ideas that I've always wanted to do, and now I can finally put it on the stage. And I love Broadway, and I love hip hop and R&B shows, and I'm mixing the two. After the release of Dangerously In Love, Beyonce planned to produce a follow-up album using several of the leftover tracks. However, this was put on hold so she could concentrate on recording Destiny Fulfilled, the final studio album by Destiny's Child. Destiny Fulfilled included the singles Lose My Breath and Soldier, which reached the top five on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Yeah, I think when Destiny's Fulfilled came out, Beyonce felt that she should give the band one more go. She didn't want her fans to think that she'd turned her back on Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child embarked on a worldwide concert tour, Destiny Fulfilled and Loving It. And during their last stop of their European leg in Barcelona, on June 11, 2005, Kelly Rowland announced that Destiny's Child would disband after the North American leg of the tour. The group agreed that they were all ready to work on their own solo albums and they gave a hint that this was their last album because it was called Destiny Fulfilled. So the clues were already out there. I think Beyonce made Kelly make the announcement because she didn't want to look like she's, you know, because each of them are solo, but because she's the biggest star, she didn't want to look like I'm you know, leaving to become, continue my superstar career. She wanted Kelly to do it so that the, the fans would know that it was still amicable and that all of them were still close friends. We still talk to each other. I'll call him and say, oh, I'm nervous. Like, my first performance, Beyonce was there. And um, that helped me out so much. You know what I'm saying? Just to know that she was there and she was supporting me. And we're like that with each other because that's what it's all about. If it wasn't for Destiny's Child, none of us would be here. In March 2006, Destiny's Child were awarded with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. 
I want to thank all of everyone for being here and thank you for supporting us. We started when we were nine years old and here we are getting a Hollywood star. Dreams come true. So thank you all so much for supporting us. God bless you. And we just want to say we love you guys so much. Thank you for supporting Destiny's Child since day one. I actually remember when we made a trip here and we were going up those escalators and we were walking down to the down the Hollywood Walk of Fame and we were like, we want to star and to be here, y'all, is so humbling and we are so honored. And we want to thank you guys from the bottom of our hearts. We love you so, so much. Such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time in our lives. I know as I'm sitting here, as I'm standing here, as Miss Tina has said, all Destiny's Child wanted was to go gold. And then Kelly saying, walking down the Hollywood Walk of Fame saying, we wanted the star. Obviously, this just goes to show, all you have to do is say it. Say it in the air, tell God what it is that you want, and he gives it to you. So that is just amazing. If it's in his will, he does. In 2006, Beyonce won critical acclaim for her role in the movie Dream Girls, which went on to gross $154 million worldwide. Beyonce went on to reveal that she was itching to get back in the studio once filming had been completed. You know what? The problem is I really love what I do, and I love music, and I couldn't be away from it. I was doing a film, Dream Girls, for six months, and I did not allow myself studio time. And I said, I'm not gonna be a Beyonce the celebrity for this time because I don't wanna get confused with this character because she's, she's a singer and she's very, very different from me, but I want to make sure I stay focused, you know, with this movie and I gave it fair opportunity to, to learn the craft of acting and, um, I had so many songs and so many concepts bottled up inside, being away from performing and singing for six months, that while I was on, um, on my vacation, I told everyone, please let me be. Don't ask me to do anything. Don't, don't call me. Let me go away and relax and get my mind back and kind of come back to my body, because I've been in Dina's body, which is the character, for so long. And while I was there, I couldn't relax. So I said, well, I'm, in, I'm, I'm coming back to New York. I'm gonna be down the street from Sony Studios. I might as well just sneak over there and um, just play. So I called the producers that I was gonna work with the next year, and um, we set up a little studio time, and we were all in the zone. So we did three songs a day, and I didn't wanna go home. And, um, every morning I was like, oh God, I want to get back in the studio. I just wanted to be in the studio. I fe it felt so good. And I did the record in over a little over two weeks. And the crazy thing is the record is really aggressive and I'm very happy, I'm very content in my life. But Dina felt like she was trapped and she was married and she was in this relationship for so long. And she, it was all the things I wanted to say while I was doing the movie, all the things I wanted the character to say. So I'm speaking for every woman that's kind of been in the relationship for a long time, and it's, it's supposed to empower women to, to have the extra boost to say all the things that they feel in their hearts. So it's really a strong album, and it really makes, makes women feel like they're powerful, and it kind of makes you want to get your power back. The album, titled B-Day, was released on September 5th, 2006 in the U.S. to coincide with Beyonce's 25th birthday. The best birthday gift is for my album to be received really well. Um, and I, I think I'm just gonna have like an intimate dinner with, with my friends and hopefully some good food. I'm gonna have a party after um, an award show in, in New York on the 31st, but it's gonna be like a big party with a lot of people, so I won't be able to relax. So I'll do it on my actual birthday, just at home, private intimate dinner. The album sold 541,000 copies in its first week and debuted atop the Billboard 200, becoming Beyonce's second consecutive number one album in the U.S. My music head is back on. Um, thank God for the album. I was able to kind of 
get myself back. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the movie comes out in January here. So I'll be back promoting the movie pretty soon. And um, it's, it's really interesting how the movies inspire the music and the music inspires the movie. When, whenever I do an album and I do all this, all the touring, and then I'm like, okay, after a year of it, I want to do something else. And I love the stability of the movies. And I just love doing something that I'm still learning. I'm new at. It's, it's almost like starting over, which is really exciting. And then when I do that, the movie, I'm like, okay, I gotta get back in the studio. I wanna go perform every night. So it keeps my life interesting and that's that's my goal to keep growing and keep keep learning and becoming more of an artist and I'm I'm happy I've been given the opportunities to do both. In April 2007, Beyonce embarked on the Beyonce Experience, her first worldwide concert tour, visiting 97 venues and grossed over $24 million. On April 4, 2008, Beyonce married Jay-Z. She publicly revealed their marriage in a video montage at the listening party for her third studio album, I Am Sasha Fierce, in Manhattan's Sony Club on October 22nd, 2008. The relationship between Jay-Z and Beyonce is fascinating because they are two of the most famous people in the world, but somehow they have managed to create a certain level of privacy for them. And I actually really respect that because obviously you have a lot of high profile celebrities who will sell their relationship or who will have very public marriage and all of that sort of thing. And they never did that. They always made it clear that privacy was really important to them. So they have a very tight knit circle of people around them. They don't speak openly about each other. And actually that makes us want to know about their lives even more. Beyonce is like an honorary Jamaican. Then she came to Jamaica again a few years ago. So I was lucky enough to hang out with her and Jay-Z down at GoldenEye, which is this amazing resort in Ocherius, Jamaica, where Ian Fleming wrote all the James Bond books. So I'm sitting in the Bond house with Beyonce, the ultimate Bond girl, and Jay-Z, who is the American James Bond, with a license to kill with his lyrics. And it was just surreal and just such magical time sitting with both of them in the Bond house and just hanging out, you know, really amazing people. She just loves Jamaica because of the whole vibe and nobody really hassles her there and it's just such a spiritual place that it just kind of taps into her spiritual subconscious. Beyonce's third album, I Am Sasha Fierce, was released on November 18th, 2008 in the US. The album formally introduces Beyonce's alter ego, Sasha Fierce, conceived during the making of her 2003 single, Crazy in Love. The album sold over half a million copies in its first week and debuted atop the Billboard 200, giving Beyonce her third consecutive number one album in the US. The album featured the number one single, Single Ladies, and the top five hits, If I Were a Boy and Halo. At the 2009 MTV Video Music Awards, the Single Ladies video was nominated for nine awards. Its failure to win the Best Female Video category, which went to American country pop singer Taylor Swift's You Belong With Me, led to Kanye West interrupting the ceremony and stating that Beyonce's video was one of the best of all time. Of course, Kanye West is there, and Kanye West saw the video and loved it, so he was sure Beyonce was going to win. So it just shows the kind of power of Beyonce that she kind of hypnotized Kanye West, that he's sitting there waiting to hear the name Beyonce when they announce the video. And all of a sudden, when they say Taylor Swift, he's so hypnotized, he just freaks out and just storms the stage and just says to Taylor Swift, no, 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 Beyonce has a better video than you, you know? So that was, that was really shocking. But I don't even think he was responsible for his actions because he was just so hypnotized by Beyonce and that great video. Single Ladies will definitely go down as an iconic song. Absolutely, because it was different, it was clever, it was fun, it's something that everyone loves. And I just think this was another really big moment for Beyonce because it's the closest she's come to releasing an anthem. In March 2009, Beyonce embarked on the I Am World Tour, her second headlining worldwide concert tour, consisting of 108 shows, grossing $119.5 million. This tour is called I Am, and basically it's gonna be very theatrical. 
Um, very grand, you know, I have my big band and they're all females. I have my dancers, of course, I always audition new people because I always want to give new talent an, an opportunity. So we have, you know, girls that are 18 and um, some of the people that have been with me for years are still working with me. And it's just a big production, but it's also sometimes very emotional. I think it's gonna be more emotional because this album, I Am, um, that portion was a lot more real and raw and more sensitive. So I think, you know, it just takes you through this emotional journey. I, I think I'm doing like 40 songs and um, I, I do the arrangements with my band and that rehearsal time is so hard because you know, people come and they all have their favorite songs and I like, I wanna always give the fans what they want, but I'm doing all the songs. I just do have to get creative with the amount and how to put them together so I can get them all together in two hours. Beyonce further expanded her acting career, starring as blues singer Etta James in the 2008 musical biopic, Cadillac Records. Her performance in the film received praise from critics and garnered her several award nominations. I saw her in the movie where she portrayed Etta James. And, you know, she did the Etta James life story and she was very, very good in that, I have to say. She was very good, but obviously those earlier movies, Austin Powers and stuff, they were just the beginning of her becoming a great actress. And I still think she's gonna be a really great actress because now she's looking very, very good. This Etta James uh, movie that she did, she was fabulous, absolutely fabulous in it. She also went on to star alongside British actor Idris Elba in the thriller Obsessed. The movie did well at the US box office, grossing $68 million on a budget of $20 million. Oh, the whole crew was phenomenal. Beyonce was especially great because she, you know, she came with open arms to just embrace this character. You know, in, in this case, she's not playing a singer or anything like that that she's more comfortable with. It's a very, very uh, a big challenge for us. So did a good job. She did a great job. Well, it's obviously the first time I haven't sang in a movie. So I wanted to make sure it was the right film. And I think this one is so much fun. It's so entertaining. And I was still able to be physical in the fight. The fight scene finale between Beyonce and Allie Larder's character won the 2010 MTV Movie Award for Best Fight. Um, you know, I do a lot of fight sequences in Heroes, so for me, for whatever reason, I'm always the girl that ends up in some kind of brawl. So uh, we had, you know, so the stunt quarters came in and we did, worked out different things, but um, we wanted to make sure it wasn't like a sissy, girly cat fight. It had to be like a dude fight, so we went at it. Found in a way, me and B. <laughs> um, it was the scene that we were we were both looking forward to and both very nervous about because, especially me, we wanted to make sure it was perfect and perfect and it wasn't too catty and like hair pulling. We wanted to make it really gritty and aggressive. And it took a couple of days. It was the last thing we shot, so it was it was easy to kind of just flow right into it because we had all the backstory. Usually they shoot all out of sequence, but it was the highlight. It was I can't say it was the highlight, but definitely one. One of them. At the 2010 Grammy Awards, Beyonce received 10 nominations, including Album of the Year for I Am Sasha Fierce, Record of the Year for Halo, and Song of the Year for Single Ladies. She tied with Lauryn Hill for most Grammy nominations in a single year by a female artist. So what a year 2010 for Beyonce. She's nominated for 10 Grammys. She wins six of them. She also releases a mega collaboration with Lady Gaga, Telephone. Lady Gaga is obviously the new pop star of the moment and Beyonce is almost crowning her as a force in music by agreeing to that collaboration. Beyonce announced a hiatus from her music career in January 2010. Heeding her mother's advice to live life, to be inspired by things again. During the break, she and her father parted ways as business partners. Beyonce's musical break lasted nine months. After taking a well-deserved break from the music scene, Beyonce was back in the studio. Her fourth studio album, titled Four, was released in mid-2011. It debuted atop the Billboard 200 chart, giving Beyonce her fourth consecutive number one album in the U.S. 
The album was preceded by two of its singles, Run the World and The Best Thing I Never Had, which both attained moderate success. On January 27, 2012, Beyonce gave birth to her first child, a daughter, Blue Ivy Carter. Yeah, I think the whole maternal thing just opened up Beyonce to another world where she was now, you know, caring for this little one. And so her songwriting started to channel into that direction, you know, now she had a little one to look after. But it didn't really, I mean, affect her career at all, because five months later she was performing in Atlantic City, you know, taking, taking Blue Ivy with her. and. You know, it, 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 I think it expanded her mind and expanded her music to a whole different level, where on her five albums, she has a song, Blue, about the, and a little girl is featured in it, and actually, Blue Ivy is the first, youngest person ever to be on a number one song. And I think she's gonna be, you know, with two parents like that, I think in 2033, she's gonna be like a mogul and a superstar. In January 2013, Destiny's Child released Love Songs, a compilation album of the romance-themed songs from their previous albums and a newly recorded track, Nuclear. Yeah, I think the fans were hoping for a comeback of Destiny's Child just because of the whole power that they had had and so many great songs and such success. But, I mean, it's just hard to get these huge forces back together again. So they just did a compilation album just to kind of satisfy the fans. But I think definitely in the future, they'll be back together again. Amongst the hype of a new Destiny's Child album, Beyonce performed the American National Anthem, singing at President Barack Obama's second inauguration in Washington, D.C. You can't get any higher than actually performing at the White House for the President and the First Lady. Considering that Beyonce is the first lady of music, you know, it was cool that she's performing for the first lady of America. After performing for the President and First Lady, Beyonce embarked on the Mrs. Carter Show World Tour on April 15, 2013, in Belgrade, Serbia. The tour included 132 dates that ran through to March 2014. It became the most successful tour of her career and one of the most successful tours of all time. In December of 2013, Beyonce unexpectedly dropped her fifth album, titled Beyonce, on the iTunes store without any prior announcement or promotion. It debuted atop the Billboard 200 chart, making Beyonce the first woman in the chart's history to have her first five albums debut at number one. The album received critical acclaim and commercial success, selling one million digital copies worldwide in six days. The album contained themes such as depression and insecurities of marriage and motherhood. The single, Drunken Love, featuring Jay-Z, peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. This is kind of interesting. It's a follow-up to Crazy in Love, which is a really fun way a lot of us got introduced to their relationship. But this one takes it a, a step further. It's very sexy. It's about female sexuality, talks about their relationship, places where they've had sex, including drunk in the kitchen. I mean, who doesn't have drunken sex in the kitchen? Clearly, Jay-Z and Beyonce. And the video's great, all done in black and white, so it gives you kind of a, a very interesting mood of what happens in their relationship. At the 57th Annual Grammy Awards in February 2015, Beyonce was nominated for six awards, going on to win three, Best R&B Performance and Best R&B Song for Drunken Love, and Best Surround Sound Album for Beyonce, making it a total of 20 Grammy Awards in her glittering career.
She is the most important and compelling musician of the 21st century. With more awards and number one singles than anyone could dream of, her dazzling career has been matched by no one. I think what is so impressive about Beyonce's music is that it's incredibly modern and she has actually been on the cutting edge of a lot of new sounds and experimentation with producers and that sort of thing. Yet at the same time, she's quite timeless when it comes to her ballads, which is really important. So some of them will stand the test of time. So her music offers something for everyone too, because obviously she's very, very powerful amongst the teenage market. But then, you know, you'll get your mums and dads who like a bit of Beyonce as well. She can headline a show, she can do stadiums, she can do whatever she wants, and people will spend the money and buy the tickets to go and see her. She doesn't have to be with Destiny's Child. She doesn't have to be with Jay-Z. She can do it all on her own. Not only will she be remembered for her musical legacy, but also as a fashion icon. I think my style is eclectic. I like so many different things. Um, it depends on, on what the treatment is or where I'm going. I, I'm, I love, you know, everything from tailor suits to just crisp white shirts to jeans to beautiful gowns to really, you know, sexy shorts and all different types of things. I, I just love, I love fashion and I love being able to do photo shoots and videos and play dress up and, you know, go home in my jeans and, you know, do different, do different styles. Beyonce has influenced and inspired many modern day artists. As her career was taking off, she introduced a new style of singing that would change the music industry. I think the first thing we have to say about um, someone who is a supernova, what qualifies someone to be a supernova is that they come out with something that is unique to them, that no one else can do, and then everyone tries to imitate it. And case in point is Beyonce, because Beyonce came with a completely new style of singing. The way she sings is completely new when it, when it arrived. You know, her, uh, her vibrato and the way that uh, she sings, and there's always this vibrato in every line that she, like every word that she says, there's a vibrato in it. And I believe that after Beyonce came out, everybody was trying to do that. So in that way, she was really unique with this new style of singing songs. She took a different approach, and it started this era of all these types of singers trying to do this same sort of style. I mean, one of the greatest artists in history, and I think she's just going to go from strength to strength, you know, selling 118 million solo records and 60 million records with Destiny's Child. I mean, that's just the beginning. I think she's just going to go on to become one of the biggest stars in history. This is what I, I was born to do. So. It's my life, you know? Beyonce has reached the forefront of international fame. And one thing is for sure, her life and career will continue to fascinate the showbiz world for many years to come.